Most of the original cast of Saved by the Bell have gone on to do other notable Hollywood projects, but what happened to Elizabeth Berkley after Bayside High? Let's grab a milkshake at the max and discuss why Hollywood won't cast the actress anymore and why that might change. We're going to go ahead and get this one out of the way because you already know it. Showgirls, the movie has done star Elizabeth Berkley absolutely zero favors since its release in 1995. It's worse than dog food. During a 2015 Rolling Stone retrospective on the film's 20th anniversary, director Paul Verhoeven said Berkeley was cast for being the only actress they auditioned who could dance but was also, quote, willing to show full frontal throughout the film. Verhoeven had never seen Saved by the Bell prior to casting Berkeley and admits that he should have, saying, It's probably true that casting her in a part so different from how American audiences knew her affected the box office, but I didn't know that series and I had no idea what kind of character she played in it. Nobody really wanted to see Jesse Spano as a stripper. Combine that with an NC-17 rating and those of you who may have wanted to see it weren't old enough to get in. When all the receipts poured in, Showgirls made $37 million off an estimated $40 million budget. The film has become one of those it's-so-bad-it's-good cult classics over the years, and it even has a documentary, You Don't Know Me. The doc's director, Jeffrey McHale, told Forbes, Showgirls succeeds because of the unique nature of its failures. That's what makes it so special. That's why we're still talking about it, you know, because we haven't really quite figured it out yet. Although critics hated her performance, everyone involved in creating Showgirls says Berkeley wasn't the problem. Director Verhoeven told the Los Angeles Times, If somebody is to blame, it's screenwriter Joe Esterhaus or me. I think she did exactly what we wanted and what we thought would be good, and apparently we failed. He added that Berkeley's performance was so good that the public couldn't separate her from Nomi Malone, saying, Her performance that everybody is so against is based on a character. The hate towards her character, an edgy, nearly psychotic character, character is actually a compliment to her performance. Esther Haas concurred, saying, It would be unfair to write Elizabeth off in terms of this picture. I think people should be a little more compassionate. For her troubles, two Razzies for Worst Actress and Worst New Star, and a measly $100,000 salary for the role. In the words of Jesse Spano, Hollywood is full of sexist pigs. I'd like to present them with the Double Swine Award. <laughs> The world never really seemed to get over the fact that Berkeley stripped down for showgirls because this was back in the early 90s when a sex tape could crumble, not create, an empire. As the star of the film, Berkeley bore the brunt of the consequences, not the male screenwriter, director, or producers, even though they admitted that the film's failures were mostly their own doing. As Paul Verhoeven explained to the Los Angeles Times, I never thought this continuous bashing of the movie and of Elizabeth would happen. We're sitting with these ruins in front of us. I realized that there would be backlash and anger, but I never thought the movie wouldn't do well, so I never accounted that she would be put in such a bad position, and I feel terrible about it." Berkeley addressed the backlash she and the film faced during an outdoor screening of Showgirls at Senespia's Hollywood Forever Cemetery in 2015, saying, "...1995 was such a different time, where taking risks like that were not embraced. They were laughed at. They were shamed publicly. To be a young girl in the center of that was something that was quite difficult." Since the big screen didn't exactly pan out for Berkeley, she channeled her performance skills through a different medium, the stage. In 1999, Berkeley co-starred with comedian Eddie Izzard in a London production of Lenny, a biographical play about controversial comic Lenny Bruce. Critics delivered mixed reviews on the play overall, but the Independent praised Berkeley's performance as Bruce's stripper wife, Rusty, as, quote, impressive. Though the production was only a limited engagement for a few months, the demands of a stage schedule from actual productions to previews to rehearsals was enough to likely have prevented Berkeley from working elsewhere, especially in Hollywood. During Berkeley's 2005 run in the revival of Larry Gelbart's Sly Fox on Broadway, the actress actually called then-Variety chief theater critic Charles Isherwood to get off her back, but it wasn't for his bad review. In reference to an appearance Berkeley had made at an awards ceremony, Isherwood identified her as the star of Showgirls. The actress had had enough. Isherwood described the call for The New York Times, saying, "...Ms. Berkeley explained that subsequent to that cinematic debacle, she had been rehabilitating her career by pursuing work with respected and talented artists. She was not merely Elizabeth Berkeley, star of a scandalously bad movie." Thank you. While Isherwood noted that, quote, "...bad movies happen to good actors all the time," he explained that, unlike more established actors, Berkeley didn't have a, quote, "...reputation to fall back on," but said, "...Ms. Berkeley's desire to live down her past mistakes rather than dine out on them seems admirable, noble even, in an age when celebrity is probably a more marketable commodity than talent."
Two years after Titanic dropped, Berkeley's then-boyfriend sued Leonardo DiCaprio for $45 million. The New York Daily News reports that in 1998, Berkeley dated actor and musician Roger Wilson, who claimed that DiCaprio ordered his entourage to physically attack him in a Manhattan hotel parking lot. Wilson alleges that DiCaprio knew Berkeley was his girlfriend but kept asking her over for dinner anyway, so he confronted him. According to his lawsuit, Wilson was then surrounded by at least eight men as DiCaprio looked on. The law the lawsuit claims Wilson was blindsided by the attack and suffered a broken larynx and other injuries. DiCaprio denied the attack and was eventually vindicated in court, but that took a while. The lawsuit was dismissed six years later in 2004. Paul Callen, the Inception star's attorney, said, For Leonardo DiCaprio, it was an entirely frivolous lawsuit. He was named because he is a prominent celebrity. DiCaprio's publicist hoped the lawsuit's dismissal would discourage others from attempting to, quote, make money on false claims. But by by the time the lawsuit was dismissed, Berkeley had long moved on from Wilson and was married to fashion designer Ralph Lauren's nephew, Greg Lauren. Did having her name attached to a lawsuit against a megastar close a lot of Hollywood doors for Berkeley? We'll never know, but we're sure it didn't help. I know what I'm doing with my life. I got a plan. Berkeley has kept relatively busy with television roles for almost 20 years thanks to brief stints on NYPD Blue, The L Word, and CSI Miami, as well as single-episode guest spots on shows like New Girl, Melissa and Joey, and Law and & Order Criminal Intent, among others. She also starred in numerous TV movies, including 2008's Black Widow, 2011's Lucky Christmas, and the 2003 Lifetime classic Student Seduction. The problem is that none of these were starring roles on long-running series or theatrical movie releases. So if viewers missed an episode or two of any of these shows or just weren't home for a TV movie airing, she wouldn't have made a mark in their consciousness, even if her performances were fantastic. Berkeley's roles on the big screen have been similarly small, although she's had parts in movies like Roger Dodger, Any Given Sunday, and The First Wives Club, she really wasn't given too much opportunity to make that big of an impression on audiences. These projects, while absolutely respectable for any working actress, unfortunately failed to get Berkeley the buzz she may have needed to get a blockbuster shot anytime soon. What's old is always new again. That's especially true in Hollywood, where they will eventually reboot everything that's ever been made at some point. In 2020, it was Saved by the Bell's turn. The series reboot hit NBC's streaming service Peacock in November of that year. Mario Lopez and Elizabeth Berkley returned as A.C. Slater and Jesse Spano, baby. Oh, if someone had told me then that I would see him you know, this many years later, back as that character, I, I wouldn't have believed it. But they aren't the only original cast members coming back. Per The Hollywood Reporter, the single-camera comedy that explores what happens when California Governor Zach Morris gets into hot water for closing too many low-income high schools and proposes the affected students be sent to the highest-performing schools in the state, including Bayside High. Time out. You know what? Never mind. Berkeley took to Instagram with the message, I'm so excited. Here we go. Mario Lopez, are you ready for Grown Up Jesse? Jesse and Slater are back for more fun. We are thrilled to have Emmy-winning 30 Rock writer Tracy Wigfield bring the sequel to life on NBC Universal. Are those caffeine pills? At first, they're so exciting. And then it gets even more exciting, but after that, it gets so scary. Here's hoping Berkeley can flex her acting chops to Hollywood casting directors everywhere. Elizabeth Berkley will always be associated with showgirls. And you know what? We think that's awesome. How bad can it be if Quentin Tarantino loves it? The legendary director once said, The thing that's great about showgirls, and I mean great with a capital great, is that only one other time in the last 20 years has a major studio made a full-on, gigantic, big-budget exploitation movie. On the 25th anniversary of its release, the so-called masterpiece of sh got the documentary treatment with 2020's You Don't Know Me, Jeffrey McHale told Los Angeles Magazine. The following, and the cult and queer fandom that it has, basically allowed space for it to be revisited and reevaluated. People are tuning in and checking it out again. Maybe back in the day it was harder to digest the satire that I think Verhoeven was aiming to achieve, but people can step away and look at it a little more objectively now. I don't think we're done with it. In a 2001 interview with TV Guide, Berkeley described showgirl girls as, quote, kind of like an ex-love that I don't even think about often anymore. But if your very first feature film goes on to become a cult classic, do you really have anything to be ashamed of? We think not. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.